Maggie, this is the fourth time you've appeared on the cover of Vogue and we're celebrating our fourth anniversary so it's, it's quite a, um, a great achievement for us. And, for me too. And <laughs> we're, uh, we're thrilled to have you on the cover again. Thank you. And I wanted to ask you how, I mean you've worked with many different photographers for us and this is the first time Nick Knight's shot for the magazine and um, how did you find the experience today? working with Nick? Well, to be honest, Nick has been on my list for ages, my dream list. Because, <laughs> I don't know, I just sort of created the dream list for myself when I look at the magazines, like, oh, I would love to work with this person, I would love to work with that person. But I never think it's going to come true or not, and I don't run after it. Right. And luckily, and very fortunately, he said yes to shooting this time with us. And I was just happy to think, wow, that's a dream come true. So I had a bit of ex expectation, to be honest. Yeah. And I must say, he's not around. <laughs> <laughs> he, he kept up, he kept it. I mean, I, I was not let down at all. And actually, no. I think it's better than I imagined. Because yeah. um, like this morning when we started, I think we were both a bit shy. I was, at, at yes. least. Because every time I think I work with a new person, yes there's a bit of holding back and not knowing how much you should let go mm. because you can look really foolish by really letting go and that person doesn't really want it and they want a really quiet you or something but luckily Nick is somebody who likes the energy and the, a bit of action a bit of movement in his photos exactly. and that really suits me well because I actually I think I'm someone who works better when I have something to do than to just sit there and look pretty I'm not very good at that. But if you say do something, then oh, that sets me off yes. and I will just go. And I think that's what happened today. It's like he gave me the green light to go. Yes. And then I just went for it. And then I think we're both quite happy with what came with out. And then that we warmed up by the second shot, I think. The first one was still a bit stiff. But, yeah. but by the second shot, I think I just went for it. So do you, I mean, there, there's a difference between shooting fashion stills and, and when you're working on films. Is there, is there a, a creative process that applies to both or do you prefer working in stills or? Um, I mean, of course there is an acting involved even for a still photo or I like it like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe that comes from my background of, as an actress. Um, that's the similarity. You do put on the clothes, you look at yourself in the mirror and suddenly you feel, this is not me. Yes. And then you get into sort of a character. And that depends on the photographer, what he wants from that too. And you work with, together to find an image, which for me, beauty is as important as what I am giving the contact with yes. the reader. So that's the similarity similar place yes. for me in photos and films. What's different is the photo is just much faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, one day is much easier than one year. Yes. Because many movies actually do last from beginning to end. End meaning promotions and press junkets and everything exactly. in film festivals. It's actually a year's pro process. Mm. And I think back then I was very happy to do that. But now I, I can't or don't really want to often give that time out anymore. Meaning you book me for a day to do a photo, very good. I'm very happy to come in, have my little fix yeah. of my hunger for acting. Yes. And then I'm out of here and then you know, I, and I see you in six months. And that is actually working better for me mm -hmm. than a film role. You touched briefly on the idea that the clothes, you use clothes to interpret a different character or... And makeup and hair too. And makeup and hair and how do you, do you think that in China today that women do use fashion as a form of self-expression or they're still a little bit timid to express themselves with fashion, there's mm -hmm. still a sort of sense that it's better to not stand out from the crowd, they're a little bit more homogenised there. I think everywhere has the same you have both sides 
of women. I mean, some women use clothes or the styling to feel sexy mm. or to attract the opposite sex, yes. you know, to want to be appealing to people. Yeah. And there are other women dressed to satisfy themselves and not necessarily for the guys to be attracted to you. Exactly. It's just like, I want to feel good. Uh, and I think China has both too, although back a few years back, maybe there'll be more girls trying to look sexy and then the others are totally still from the countryside and not paying right. attention at all. So it's more extreme at the beginning, I think. But now it's gotten to a point, I think, thanks to the magazines, thanks to internet, thanks to their work, now that they can find things for references mm -hmm. much easier than before, that I see there are more normal girls who want to look good. Yes. And it's not always just to be sexy. And, and sometimes in the streets of Beijing, I see it go, wow, she looks trendy. Yeah. How did she get that idea? Yes. <laughs> you know? And I'm quite impressed with how fast it's going. And I think very soon they would be dressing as in Europe and America too. Do you think, do you think there will be a sort of this idea of modern Chinese style? Because I find when I go to China, it's, it's very difficult to define that. It's still, people are still defining what modern Chinese style is today. And mm -hmm. it feels like even in fashion, um, there are some young designers who have their own voice, but a lot of designers are still following what's happening internationally. Yes, but I, I think with the confidence, they are slowly beginning to find their own voice. Right. I think that's still actually what's lacking at the moment are the creative people. Because most Chinese girls are still buying actually clothes from the West or yes. imported clothes than local designers. Right. Even myself, I can't really think of which local designer that I would like watch out for their work. Right. Because no one has really established a style yet. Mm. in that sense. There are a few in America, they're Chinese, but they're so American that they're not Chinese really, yes. you know, I can think of two or three names immediately. Yeah. But in China itself, I don't, there's no name that pops up yet no. that I would recognize and can relate, ah, oh, that's their work. But I think soon there will be. You think so? I think so too. I think talents are bound to be there. There are talents everywhere in the world. It's just like how the they just need to evolve. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Ooh. You can go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.